Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. Trying it again. Let's see if we can connect today. I don't know, internet issues. You know, we pay so much money for internet and it doesn't want to work. It's Friday, it's Facebook Friday, and that means I'm gonna make three projects um, that feature one product. I do that every week, and this week's product is the Nine Live Stamp Set. Um, I have three really cute things to show you today. I am so happy to see you, Gina. I was talking to myself for a little while and nobody was showing up. I had internet issues again. <laughs> that needs to be fixed big time. Hi everybody, Kathy Dinett. So good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Hi Susan. Um, so today, three more Nine Lives projects. I told you on Wednesday that I am not necessarily a cat person. Um, we have dogs. I haven't had a cat since I was a little girl, but this cat in this set is super cute. So I had no problem at all coming up with four projects using this cute guy. And I actually have a fifth one to show you. That was my stamp club project in February, I believe. All right, so let me run through a few announcements and let me make sure that I can find you guys so that I can see your comments a little bit better. Okay, good. There we are. So celebration, you guys, nine days. That's all we have left. Celebration goes from January 3rd to March 31st. Well, here we are at the end of March, nine days left. That means if there's anything left that you want from this catalog, the celebration catalog, you need to put your order in in the next nine days. Now, in addition to this, Stampin' Up! also added this flyer. And there's lots of good things in here. If you've already gotten all the stamp sets you want, there are consumable items here. So things that you would use up. Um, for instance, the Rich Razzleberry Velvet Ribbon, you actually get two bolts of that. And that would be great to wrap presents, um, to add to treat bags, and you'll have two bolts of it. So it's a consumable, which means you'll use it up, not like a stamp set where you'll have it forever. Um, same with the paper in here, the Painted Seasons, which came out mid-season, uh, mid-February. And then there's another one called P Petal Promenade. And it's from the annual catalog, and I have barely touched it, but I am using this celebration as my excuse. Next week, you're gonna see some of it. I have already designed all of next week's projects. I'm way ahead. Um, it's so, so cute, and I love to get paper. I don't know about you guys, but paper, I always say it's my drug of choice. <laughs> paper. I love it. I can never have enough of it. Um, so when I see paper as a choice, um, as one of my free items, I'm always going to go for the paper. Also, uh, the pizza boxes. I love those pizza boxes. I have used those numerous times over the years um, for party favors, for treats, for they hold a variety of things. So if you haven't gotten the pizza boxes, that's another um, great thing to get with your free celebration choice. So if you're new, because you might be, Celebration means for every $50 you spend, you can choose one item from the level one items. And if you spend $100, you can get two or one of the level two items, which are more expensive. And that's why they um, are free with a $100 purchase, okay? Nine days, that's it. Nine days left, you guys. So on April 1st, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I promise I've got some exciting things for April, so you won't want to stop watching, even though you won't get free items in April. Um, I want to remind you, I just remembered that my last class for this month, deadline is Monday, the Garage Gears, I call it the wrong thing every time, Geared Up Garage, it's a great masculine set. Um, and this class is to go, it's delivered straight to your mailbox. I have techniques in this class for you, some different techniques. Um, to, one of them is really cool, how to make this these gears look like rusted metal. I don't know if that's coming through on the video or not. Um, and the class includes a video along with a PDF. So the deadline is Monday. If you want to this class, you've got to sign up by Monday at midnight. It closes on, mid, on at midnight. And on today's PDF, right here over at pinkbuckaroo.com. There is a link right there that you can type in to find the details for that class, okay? Got to email me for that registration link. If you want just the PDF though, you can click, there's a link there, you can go purchase it and it's immediately emailed to you. All right, so what else do I wanna tell you? 
the All Star Tutorial Bundle for March. That if we only have nine days left in celebration, that means you only have nine days left to earn this. Look how big it is. It's like 70 something pages this month. Um, 12 different amazing demonstrators from Stampin' Up! around the world designing uh, product project tutorials for you. You get it free with a $50 order. Um, or you can buy it for $15 if you are a demonstrator or you don't want to order. Um, it's also in a PDF store, okay? New one coming out April 1st, and I've already designed the project for it, and it's really, really cute. All right, how about some prizes? I've got some prizes from last week. Um, actually, my prize from Wednesday, I did um, Facebook Live on Wednesday, and I chose randomly someone who shared that video. And Vicki Burdick, you are the winner. Um, Vicki, please email me your mailing address and I will get you the ver vibrant vases out in the mail to you with some sequins on there too. Um, and then, not last week, two weeks ago, for our last Facebook Friday, I had two prizes, the perfectly paired stamp set along with a ribbon share. And I have, oh no, I lost one of my post-it notes. Oh no, oh no, where did it go? The winner's name. Oh, darn it. Where did it go? That's so weird. Is it stuck to the back? Hmm. All right, well, one of them is Susan Rasmussen. Susan, I have your address. No worries, I will get that out to you. And the other one, I can't. I can't believe it. Oh, oh, look, it's still stuck to my desk. Here it is. Karen Bongarts. Karen Bongarts, please excuse my messy writing. Karen, I don't have your mailing address. Message me your mailing address, okay? All right. Oh, thanks, Vicki. That's so sweet of you. Um, I appreciate that. And believe me, not all my projects are awesome. You don't see what goes in the trash. <laughs> in fact, I'm working on something right now that I have thrown away three times and I cannot get it to do what I want it to do. And you guys saw me on Wednesday forget how to make <laughs> the card. So believe me, they're not all awesome. Um, this week's prize is Here Comes the Sun. It's a hostess set with some of that ribbon that um, it's that double-sided gorgeous, uh, let's see, Coastal Cabana and Granny Apple Green ribbon. I've got two of them. One will go to somebody who shares the video and one who will go to somebody who goes over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, scroll to the bottom, there's a widget there, enter your information and it will randomly pick somebody next week, okay? So don't forget to share and don't forget to go over and enter. Yes, yeah, Shannon, I had a great trip, thank you. Um, it was wonderful, it feels like a long time ago now. My kids got to see snow and the mountains and we just had a lot of time together, which is good. And crazy. <laughs> you know how it goes. But it was good. It was we don't normally travel for spring break and this year we did and, and I think um, it was a nice break to just kind of step away and get out of things. So thank you for asking. Oh Connie, you just finished the Happy Tales tutorial. Oh I hope you liked it. Yeah, that is a fun, fun class. I love the Happy Tales bundle. It's so good. All right, if you guys haven't joined me for Facebook Facebook Friday before I type up PDF Every Thursday night at volleyball practice, this is what I'm doing, dodging volleyballs. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, when you are looking down at your computer and you're typing and there's volleyballs flying all over the place, even if it's not coming close to you, you think it is and you, you know, you duck and you dodge. I do that for the entire hour and a half. I, I'm like dodging and nothing's coming at me. <laughs> Sometimes they do. But anyway. That's when I type up your PDF, okay? So it has all the products, and I miss a few every now and then, guys. And my item numbers aren't 100% correct. I'm a human, not a robot, sorry. So if you're ordering from this sheet, enter the number and double check that what I've said that number is comes up, because there are mistakes sometimes. And if it's a mistake, then you can just go over to the search bar and search the, the title, okay? Um, Debbie, you see my, my uh, frameless in the background. Where do you get the storage envelopes, magnetic card? Um, Hold on, I can't see all of that comment for some reason. So the magnetic cards are from a company called Stampin' Storage. You can also get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're vent covers. The envelope is what they come in from Stampin' Up, that kind of thick envelope. Um, and I'm actually, the ones up on the wall, that's a knife. Um, it's for the kitchen. You put it on the wall and you put your knives on it. And I got them, I've gotten them 
from several places actually, IKEA and Amazon. And they're not very expensive and they hold the framelits really well. Um, I used to have them all the way down and in fact that's what those cards are on now. But I, d I didn't like the way it looks. Our front door to the house is right here and I just felt like it kind of looked messy. Um, so now I keep them in those little cards. But I loved having them out on the wall so you could see where they are and see, you know, the ones that you want you don't have to flip through um, this right here the ones that are on the wall are my most frequently used you know, like my banners labels that scallop border that I use every day um, so that's what those are little knife um, magnet I don't know the name for it but you know it goes in the kitchen okay that was kind of a sidebar PDF everything you need there go to pinkbuckaroo.com scroll down under the last picture you'll find it the second page has my announcements guys don't forget celebration is ending in nine days and not only do you get something free with your $50 purchase but there's also the starter kit special which I totally just skipped right over for $99 you can get $175 in product of your choice there's no pressure to hold a workshop to hold a class you can be your own customer and just use the discount don't worry about a lot of people are concerned like what's involved what are they gonna make me do nothing when you become a demonstrator you're just really joining because you love the product and either you want to sell it and share it with your friends or two you want to sell it to yourself and get a discount and that's okay I get a lot of people asking me um, feeling kind of ashamed of that and don't feel that way a lot of people um, buy the starter kit for that very reason uh, in fact in the beginning that was why I bought it um, because I loved the product and I had no money and I wanted as much of it as I could so um, the starter kit can be two things a way to earn extra money if you want to hold classes do Facebook do whatever you want or just get the discount um, there's no requirements from stamping up or from me as your upline so just know that if you have questions about that please ask me the second option during celebration is the one uh, that 129 129 dollars you still get 175 dollars in product but you also get this adorable bag which hasn't sold out i was really thinking this was going to sell out they must have really stocked it i have been using this bag a ton since i got it um it is excellent if you like to travel and craft it it holds a ton it's got pockets here for your punches um, i put my pens and markers here it is so good this will go away and not come back after March 31st. So if you want this bag, if you want to get added extra benefit to that starter kit special, you've got to do it by the end of March. Oh, and free shipping on starter kits. Free shipping. That's one thing we hardly ever have at Stamping Up is free shipping, but it's always on the starter kit. And that's 10%. That saves you quite a bit of money, free shipping. Okay, I'm going to get stamping. I'm talking forever. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> If you haven't joined me, Facebook Friday, get the PDF. Also, if you place an order by Monday at midnight, I'm going to send you today's make and takes free in the mail next week. All right. This this is the last um, Facebook Friday. This is what they look like. They come. They have a little note, the link to the video. I make you a little tag and everything there for you to make projects. Okay. The only thing you need to provide are whatever the product is. So like the, the stamps. I can't send stamped images, so you always have to use your own stamps and ink. Um, and then I usually score, cut out, do all that for you too, okay? So, without further ado, let's get started stamping. I'm gonna do some rearranging here. Let's see, I showed you guys what the prizes were. I didn't forget. Hey, you guys, if I forget at the end, I have a bunch of things I wanna show you, but now that I've talked so much, I don't know if we're gonna have time. So remind me, and if not, we'll do it next week, okay? All right, I'm going to move you guys down over here close your eyes if you get seasick okay thanks elaine for sharing the video i appreciate that oh uh, betsy thanks so much oh for time joining me live well good thank you i know you know i love to watch things live but rarely do i catch them when they're live if, and I've showed you guys this before. If you are scrolling through Facebook, maybe you're like waiting at the doctor's office or, you know, somewhere where you can't watch. Let me show you something. 
Um, on Facebook, let me close this. On Facebook, if you're scrolling through and you see a video that you wanna watch but you can't, if you click on those three little dots and click Save Video, it puts it over there and you're saved. Uh, you know, it's different on every device, but down here it's these three little lines and then you can click Saved and it'll be there later. So like maybe you're gonna craft late tonight, then you could pull it up and watch it while you're crafting. So just a little FYI. Okay, how does that look? Is it straight? You guys know I can't stand when it's crooked. It drives me crazy. Today, Nine Lives, a Nine Lives stamp set coordinates with the Cat Punch that came out not this past Halloween, the, the one before. Um, it was a great fun little Halloween set that had a black cat. Well, now we've got just a normal cat with all his fun little goodies and some really cute sentiments. So. I couldn't wait to play with it. It's a great set. We're gonna make three cards. I'm gonna show you three different ways, three different things you can do with this cat. Now on Wednesday, if you didn't watch, on Wednesday we made this um, box card and I showed you how to do reverse stamping with that cute cat. So if you did not catch that one, make sure you go back over to Wednesday's post. And by the way, I had a really hard time getting that video to upload to YouTube. So it didn't get up it did not load that night. Usually I have it up by that night, but no, this one took well into yesterday, but it's there. If you didn't see it, it's there on my blog, it's on YouTube, and it's on um, Facebook, of course. All right, so let's get started with the first one. This was my swap, my team, um, our theme, for March swaps, my Sweet Stampede team, was critters. Because have you guys noticed, we have a ton of animal stamps. So I made this guy, and I told you a couple weeks ago, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about where I find my inspiration, because that's the question I get asked the most. How do you come up with your ideas? So when I um, wanted to make this card, I knew I wanted to do a black cat and I'd like to do it with pink. So on Pinterest, first I typed in a uh, cute black cat, didn't really come up with anything, black cat and pink. And I found this, this is like a pen for, it says perfect bridal shower. And I just liked all of it. And it just kind of gave me that, that idea for kind of girly pink stuff with that black cat. So that's how I came up with the idea for this one. All right. All right, let's make our black cat. He is embossed. We're gonna emboss him on black paper with black embossing powder. Now I have a cat, no, I don't have a cat. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. There is a cat that lives on my front porch and in my flower bed right in front. He is the neighbor's cat and he is a black cat. And it, may, it annoys me that he is on my porch and driving my dogs crazy, but he is kind of cute. So he was the, really the inspiration here for this cat. Um, I don't like what he does to my bushes. I'm just going to say he makes a mess. And you know, what are you going to do? I don't know. It's, he's an outside cat. He's the neighbor's cat. And they actually have two black cats. But he, this one, I don't know. Anyway, he's the inspiration. I don't know what his name is. All right. So what I did just there, that was black cardstock. Um, embossing buddy it has like baby powder in it and you run it on your cardstock to release any uh static electricity that you have that will hold on to these powders in places that you don't want it okay my dogs do not like it who asked me that vicky no they do not luckily there are not very many windows on the front of our house that they can get to there's one here in my office but this big table that you guys are looking at is did that stamp yeah, it did. Okay. Um, it's pretty much in front of that window, so they cannot, <laughs> they can't get to it. There's like a little, like one foot. Wow, I have little fibers in my black embossing folder. Where did those come from? Um, anyway, they don't come over here very much. They like to go get on my daughter's bed because they can look out her window. and But then they don't really see him because he's down here under the porch. But they do see him when he's in the backyard, that's for sure. All right, black embossing powder is really fun if you haven't used it before. Well, some weird things are happening. What is this giant puddle of embossing powder? I don't know. That's weird. Okay, there we go. So that embossing buddy is supposed to keep your, your embossing powder where it's supposed to go. It does most times. 
Okay, now I just threw that paper on the floor and I need it. When I'm looking for it, you guys remind me it's on the floor. So he's black on black. And I am guessing that you guys cannot really see him at all. But I promise you he's there. And I'm going to hit it with a heat tool. It takes about maybe 15 or 20 seconds for this heat tool to heat up to the right temperature. And when it does, your black embossing powder is going to turn shiny. It's not going to be powdery anymore. And that's how you'll know it's done. You want to, and I'm not very good about this, you, you want to move your heat tool like this so it doesn't scorch your paper. But I find myself <laughs> holding it in one place a lot. Um, and I yet have yet to scorch my paper but be careful because you can especially vellum I find that vellum does scorch pretty quickly all right our cat is nice and shiny and instead of just you know stamping black ink on black paper this is really going to show the stamped image more than than it would if it was just the ink now his eyes you know how the cat's eyes reflect the light hi Lisa um I was thinking okay he's just all black something needs to there needs to be something. So this is our chalk marker. I'm gonna put a little dot there and a little dot there. Just a little dot on his eyes to make you see him. <laughs> He's cute. All right, let's punch him out. You turn your punch over to the back, slide it down, and you've gotta line, line it up. The, this cat has a lot of places to line up. The tail, I always start with the tail, and then I kind of twist the head over. And once you have it, punch him out like that. Pretty simple. All right, now let's put the rest of the card together. We're gonna emboss this piece of Flirty Flamingo. Let me get my, my camera stand off of my Big Shot. We're gonna use, and guys don't laugh at me because I always feel like I'm saying this wrong. Tough. Tuffeted, tufted, tuffeted, embossing folder. <laughs> the one that looks like a quilted pillow, it's so cute. And you're gonna take your piece of Flirty Flamingo and put it right there on that line. See how Stampin' Up, they're so smart. They put that line there so we can line up our paper to make it straight. This is one of our thicker embossing folders. So you only need one clear plate and your regular platform. There it is. This uh, embossing folder is really cute. It's good like for baby cards or something really girly. And by the way, if you're looking for the measurements, they are on that PDF I talked about at the beginning over at pinkbuckaroo.com, today's post. Under the last photo, there it is, okay? You can find it there. All right, so we've got that. Now, oh, you know what, let's do this first. I'm gonna use the sentiment um, this one says, you're the cat's meow. So this card could be a thank you or just, you know, I admire you or you're the best, you know. One thing I have really found with this set is that the cat is just kind of a neutral image and you could use any, really any, hmm, I cut different paper, didn't I? Then this one, that's all right. This is from the Flirty Flamingo, I mean the Brights DSP stack, and you have two different prints. Um, but you can use any sentiments you want. This could be a thank you, this could be a happy birthday. I mean, it's just very, I find it's very neutral. You know, I'm thinking of you. Lots of options. And you'll see I use a, a different sentiment set on the next card. All right, there's that scallop, that stitched scallop border that I'm obsessed with from the Be Mine stitched framelits. They were the Valentine framelits, remember? Um, I mean, I call them the Valentine set because they have the hearts and stuff. Put the cat on there with a dimensional, but I have been using that. That's one of those, one of my most frequently used framelits that's up on that wall because I love it. There's another one that I just discovered in the little bouncing, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen it. In the annual catalog, there's a little baby set that has the baby and the jumper. Well, that framelit set has a really cute scallop border too. I just used that set with my Blends Club and it's so cute and I really like it. I don't really, I'm not kind of, I'm kind of out of that stage in my life. Nobody I know is having babies or 
close to having babies, but that set's really cute. Maybe for scrapbooking, if you're scrapbooking your kids' baby pictures. I stamped the bow on that a scrap of Flirty Flamingo, and we're going to, we just I just fussy cut it out because there's no punch or framelit that matches. And I'm just gonna put it right there because she's a girl. <laughs> and then, do you guys remember these? These are the frosted drops. I think that's what they're called, frosted droplets. They were in the holiday catalog and they carried over and I just discovered that recently. I thought they had retired, but no, they have not. They are on the carryover list, so you can get them. They're not in any of the current catalogs, but you can find them online. All right, last but not least is a bow with our Whisper White Baker's Twine. I love to tie bows on the fold of my cards. I do that a lot. Whoops. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, Trisha. You're all right. We're on project number one. You're not too late. I did a lot of talking today. All right, and there's our black cat. Do any of you have a black cat? I thought black cat owners would appreciate the black cat. All right, did I mention, I have it here and I didn't mention it. This is a stitched rectangle right here that I stamped the sentiment on. That would be cute if you changed it to orange and it was Halloween, right? And you could do some kind of, you know, spooky say saying. Cute, I thought. Okay, thanks for the hearts, you guys. I appreciate it. Let's move on to project number two. Let me move this stuff out of the way and grab my next basket, which is right over here. Now, mm, nope, that's third basket. We're gonna do this one first. We're gonna use a Stamparatus next, and I need to grab my chamois. Let's see, this is the second card we're gonna make, and this was actually my other swap for my team. I wanted to stick with the cat, Oh no, my chamois is almost dry. Um, well, goodness gracious, it's very dry. I have one around here that is not dry. Who knows where it is? I have four or five chamois, and I just use them as they. And then once all they're dry, I go and get them wet. My daughter said the other day, "You need a, you need a sink in your in your office, Mom." I was like, "Yeah, I do. You're right." Okay, so this card, I'm going to show you the inspiration for this card. Here it is. Again, I went to Pinterest and I typed in um, cute cats. That's what I typed in, cute cats. And that's, I saw this one. My cat, if you were with me on Wednesday, my cat Mickey was a Siamese cat, looked similar to this. And I noticed what he's sitting on. I don't know if it's a cushion or whatever, but it reminded me of our postscript background stamp. So that's what I decided. I was gonna do kind of a Siamese looking cat with a postscript background. So that's where I went with that one. That's how I got the idea for this one. And guess what, I have a sketch. Here's the sketch, look. I didn't use a star, right? But I, I used that, I made a frame, and I did a little something with a sentiment. So I have a challenge for you guys. I'm gonna post this on Facebook this week, and if you make a card with this sketch, I want you to put it in the comments, okay? I'm I'm really excited about the sketches. I'm making sketches for you guys, okay? Oh, it's a rag doll, Lisa? Oh, I don't know my cats. Well, whatever, it looked like Siamese to me. Uh, it's a gray and white cat and with black. Um, so anyways, if you guys use the sketch, then make sure you come and share it, okay? The other set I'm using, I told you I was gonna change up the sentiments a little. The Miss You is right here from Itty Bitty Greetings. This is a fantastic set, look how big it is. It's actually two cases, okay? So, um, I'm using the I Miss You because I needed something long and skinny to go right there and none of the sentiments in the current set that we are using did, did not, I just didn't have anything that worked. All right, so let's make our cat. Now, this cat, I told you guys on Wednesday, the layers, you know, I have everything stacked up here and I have it stacked all wrong. Everything I need first is on the bottom. That wasn't very smart. Let me get situated. Okay. What I was saying is that I told you guys on 
when was it Wednesday that I could not get the stripes or the spots to line up when I was trying to stamp it just using a block. Um, I did actually try it several times and could not get it lined up. Um, and I actually had somebody message me that said she was having the same problem. Uh, so that's why we have a stamparatus, especially with these kind of stamps. It's going to help us line them up the right way every time, especially if you're making a bunch of them. The thing with this cat is that you have to not only line up the body part, but you've got to line up those ears and that tail. So it's really difficult to do that just by your sight. All right, I'm going to start by stamping him or her. I don't know. Is it a boy or a girl? I think this one's a boy. Stamping him in memento black. And I've got my paper, my Whisper White paper here, hold, the magnet's holding it down. I'm going to take my plate and just turn it around and use the back side because if I wanted to do this, maybe I'm making a set of cards or projects or I just want to do different colors, I this way I don't have to line it up more than once. I just do it one time and it's there. All right, so I try to look at the ears and then I look at the back and that bottom foot and the tail. And when everything looks relatively good, I lay it down and pick it up with my plate, okay? Smoky Slate ink for my cat. And let's see. Hi ladies, thanks for joining us. Oh, so cute. There we go. Now I'm not gonna get rid of this Stamparatus quite yet because we're gonna do the background stamp. Where should I put this? It's got ink on it. Let me see. I'm going to put it right there because my darn chamois is, is dry. All right, now we're going to do the background stamp. And the background stamp already has foam on it. It's not a photopolymer. So let's see if you guys can tell the difference. See how that has a thick foam? So we don't need to use that foam that comes with it when you're using either, well, your clear or your cling mount. All right, it doesn't need that thickness. That is only for those photopolymer sets that do not have that thickness. All right, my Whisper White, and I am going to stamp it in Smoky Slate. Catherine, the cool duct tape is from Michaels. I wrapped my uh, magnets in duct tape to kind of give me a better handle on them and it helps pull them apart if they snap together. All right, make sure you stand up and give lots of pressure. Look, I missed right there, so I'm gonna put it back down. And ta-da, very good, all done. All right, now I can move this. I'm trying to think, wait a minute, you know what? We're gonna use this again in a minute for the next project. So let me just set that over here for later. Better put these back in too, or I will lose them because we know how I am. I have a, I don't know, five foot table and yet I lose things. Okay, let's do some die cutting. We're gonna use our big shot, but this time, because we're using framelits, we're gonna, I'm gonna take off that plate and use my magnetic platform. The magnetic platform is an accessory you can buy for your big shot. And it holds your framelits in place. It's great. Um, yeah, you know, they have decorative duct tape in Michaels. And the reason I know that is because my daughters have gone through phases where they're obsessed with duct tape. You know, they can make like duct tape wallets and stuff. It's a craft that the kids do. So, and I think that's probably why they carry it. All right, so this is the second largest rectangle framelit. And you guys, the rectangles are a little delicate. You gotta be careful with your paper. Um, you cannot cut through more than one layer at a time, unfortunately. So be careful with your rectangle framelits. They are so awesome, but they're just different than other framelits that we have. These, I can cut through two layers most, most of the time, but those, I, I guess they're very, very thin. The thickness here on them is different, and I think that's what it is. Oh, and they have the stitching on the outside. I think that, that makes a difference too. Okay, so these are the stitched shape framelits, the squares, the largest and the second largest. 
Yeah, uh, Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, you can get um, that cute duct tape at all of those places. All right, save this for later. You can use it for something else. Put it in your box of random die cuts because right now we're just gonna use the frame that we made by putting those two together. All right, I think we're ready to begin assembling our card. Here is my card base. It is basic gray. Ouch, I have a little splinter in my finger. Goodness. All right, dimensionals on each corner. Thanks for the share, Debbie. I appreciate you guys sharing. That is um, very nice and helpful, so thank you. All right, dimensionals there. Now this one is gonna get dimensionals too, but we're gonna use the baby dimensionals. Their official name are mini dimensionals, but I call them babies, because they are the perfect width for the skinny things. We don't have to cut our dimensionals in half anymore because we've got the babies. All right, there we go. Right here in, kind of in the bottom left corner. Now our cat, you guys, oh, whew, I thought I'd lost my cat. I haven't even punched him out yet. I'm calling him Siamese. Someone else says it's a rag doll. You know, I don't think I've ever even seen a rag doll cat. I've seen them online. Is there a cat that doesn't shed? You guys, I have a question. You guys might know that. I don't want anything that sheds. Is there a cat that doesn't shed? Of course, if I got a cat, it would probably be like from the shelter and then you wouldn't even know what it is, right? <laughs> and then it would shed. All right, one dimensional, we're gonna have him sitting kind of in the window like that. I've got soft sea foam and the leaf, you know, I call this leaf punch, but I have a feeling it has a more formal name but you can find it on the supply list. The number is there. All right, we've got those. Now we're gonna use this itty bitty flower punch. This is from, I believe it's called the itty bitty punch pack, itty bitty flower punch pack in the occasions. It's been on back order. I, th I think it's due back April 1st. Oh, Janice McCarty, that's my mom, you guys, and she's the other reason we don't have a cat. We tell the girls that my husband's allergic and that Jamma's allergic and that Jamma couldn't come visit if we had a cat. I know. I don't want a cat. I don't. They're so cute, though, especially this one on my front porch when he's making a mess in my bushes. Okay, I'm going to do something to these flowers if I can locate. Here it is the other part of my take your pick tool. On the end down here, you can pull this off. Did you know it has two ends? One is a piercer and one is a little spatula. You can take it off and it comes with this other end that you can put on it, which is a stylus. And if you take your stylus and go around in the middle of your flowers like this, it curls them up and makes them more three dimensional. All right. There we go, that one's not wanting to behave. There we go. And then I'm gonna get some pearls. And I felt like <laughs> they're so much cuter when they belong to someone else, I know. The girls ask for a cat all the time, but they can have one when they grow up. They're already planning what kind of pets they're gonna have when they grow up. These are my basic pearls and I'm taking my Dark Daffodil Delight Stamp and Blend and coloring them in. And let's see, how do I wanna do this? I'm gonna, I think I'm finally out of putty on this, but let's see if I have enough to get these pearls over here. You can make pearls any color you want with your Stampin' Blends. That, that, mark, that ink is alcohol ink, which means it will dry on the pearl. All right, let's layer these guys up. I'm gonna use glue dots. I prefer glue dots, pretty much on everything. Let's see, we're gonna do one back here like that. I kind of imagine him sitting up in a windowsill somewhere or out on a, in like a fire escape on an apartment building with foliage around him. And then we'll take the flowers and we will put those on glue dots too. And let's switch this piece out. 
let's, whoops, let's try the spatula with this. Let's see how that works. I don't use the spatula in very often. We'll put one there, one here, and then one, let's do one way over here. Okay, but now we have to do our sentiment. I miss you is what it says, but I want it to just say miss you. I, I don't want the I. So I'm gonna get Brittany's um, post-it notes. I don't know if she's here again today. She made me that cute little post-it note. Um, oh, come on. The little post-it note holder. I may have to use a bigger one. Let's see. All right, we just needed to sit there for just a second. We're going to mask off the eye, stamp the miss you, and then stamp it here on the edge. We just need a strip of this Whisper White. And if you have your trimmer, you would be probably better off cutting it with your trimmer, but I'm just gonna do it with my scissors. All right, so we're gonna cut that off, we're gonna cut that off, and let's put a mini dimensional on the back. You could also, instead of I miss you, put hello, or thinking of you, and look, wow, I cut it to the perfect size. Ta-da, there we go. No bow, are you guys proud? I made a card without a bow today. That's a rarity. Doesn't happen very often. But I think it's good enough without the bow. Okay, project number two is done. What do you guys think? It's a little different from my normal style, I think. Those colors, those muted colors are a little bit different. All right, let me clean up and we will do the last one. The last one is my favorite. I'm gonna show you guys how to make that box. Yeah, Joy, you don't have them either. Can't keep them off table and counters. I hear that a lot. Yeah, that, I think that would bother me, knowing that everything on the counter <laughs> was up for grabs for the cats. Yeah, I see pictures on Facebook of people's cats doing that. I think my middle daughter, I think Emma, she's gonna have like five cats and seven dogs and eight rabbits at her house. She's constantly telling me, I'm gonna have this and then I'm gonna have that and then I'm gonna have this one, we'll see. All right, let's move this one out of the way and look at our last one. This is my favorite of the three. Um, I, I'm i sure you guys have seen those memes um, with the cats in the box and it says, if I fits, I sits, or if I sits, I, no, if I sit, if I fits, I ship. That's what it says, or things like that. You know, cats are always in boxes. So that was kind of what I was thinking about. And it took me a while to really work this out so that it would be completely flat. See, it's totally flat, so you can mail it. I, I th start out with a regular box and then flatting it, but it didn't work. So I'm gonna show you how to make this cute box. I'm also using the sentiments here. I use the welcome right here from the well-written framelits. Um, if you haven't splurged on these, I highly recommend it. These are awesome. Um, I have been using these a lot and they cut really well. The paper comes out really easily. It is a splurge, but celebration is a great time to do it because you get a free item with it. Um, and you can add it to your starter kit too, so that'd be a great way to get it. Um, and then the word, so happy you're here, is from the coordinating stamp set called Well Said. Look how many sentiments. 51 stamps in that set. That's a lot. You can kind of craft your own little um, sayings with it. Okay, let's start with the box. Hmm, let's see. I've got things all over the place. The box is crumb cake. And, no, you know what? I want to make the cat first because then we're going to put him in that box and he has to sit and dry for a while. So let's do that real quick and then we'll come back to the box. Now we are gonna use the Stamparatus again because we are gonna put give him stripes. You know, in the set you can give him kind of those spots that we did the last time. And you can also give him these stripes, which we're gonna take this one off and they're dirty. I don't have my, my um, chamois. And let's get the stripes. All right him here. Remember, you got to put the foam back in there because this is a photopolymer set. I'm worried that 
What did I do with the other magnet? It's gonna come back and like jump at me. Well, it'll show up. Here's my other magnet. <laughs> I only try to use one at a time because they compete. If you guys know, if you have a Stamparatus, the magnets compete. And they will jump at each other and fight. It's very frightening when they do. Okay, here we go. This is gray granite. This is memento black. Let's do the black first. Woo, I was almost too low on the paper. Now let's flip him over and get the stripes. We used stripes on Wednesday and it is a little more tricky than the other one. Make sure that the back, I think that's the part I have the most trouble with. Make sure the back is lined up all the way with that back line. Look at the tail and the ears. And then we're gonna ink it in gray granite. The stripes are in gray granite as well. All right. There we go. Let's see. Wow, that one's perfect. That one's better than the one I did on Wednesday. So I think really the key is there to make sure that the back lines up with the back when you're lining those stripes up. But yeah, it's it definitely is one that needs the stamparatus. Okay. Punch this guy out. He's waiting for his box to play in. All right, now let's go back and make the box. You're gonna need two pieces of crumb cake cardstock that are two and a fourth inches square. This is the Taylor Tag Punch. This is what we're gonna use. You're gonna stick it in from the top and you're gonna line up the this corner and this corner just right with the diagonal line. So let's see, I'm gonna pull it up. See how I'm gonna get it just to where it just barely goes, peeks out, and make sure it's even on both sides. And then punch. Okay, we're gonna do that on both of them. Now I have clean recordings of these uh, three projects that will be on Facebook, I mean on uh, YouTube. They're actually already there. I got ahead today. So if you wanna come back and watch this without all the chit chat, it is on YouTube. Pink buckaroo, just search me if you don't know. All right, now get your Simply Scored, and you wanna line up this middle part with the score line and score it. I have a Sharpie marker on my six inch mark that I can use whenever I just need something, a quick line. All right, now we're gonna close it, and we're gonna follow this, we want, to mirror this right here. So I'm just gonna stick this in, it's closed, and I'm gonna line up that bottom corner right here, and just kind of angle it up. Okay, you guys see that? Just like that. And then when you open it, it looks like a book. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing here. Just look at the top angle and you want it to go the same direction. And actually this one, this is gonna be the back, it doesn't really matter. It won't be seen. Okay, there we go. Actually, I take that back. This part will be seen. The first one won't be seen. All right, you have two books, all right? We're gonna do one regular and one upside down. But first, we're gonna ink the edges. So to do that, Get a stamp and sponge and crumb cake ink and just go along the edges, fold it on that score line, get both of the fold, so both sides of the fold, open it up again around the edges. And this one we don't even need to do the bottom because it won't show. Okay, so we've got one pointing up and one pointing down. And I think that the best thing to use on this is liquid glue because we want to keep, if we used, you know, tear and tape or fast fuse, I worry that it would make the box too narrow to, to put in our kitty. All right, so I'm just gonna do some dots down the side. If you're using fine tip glue, do not do anything else until you put that pin back in there because it dries quickly and once it dries, it's done. All right, let's see. I'm gonna line this top point here. You know what? I didn't, I'm using the, they're exactly the same. I just didn't ink this one. 
like I needed to. I thought it was going to be in the back. Okay, so top point there and the side point goes over here. Make some adjustments, get them lined up, and there's your box. Cute, right? It looks like a box. I was pretty proud of myself when I came up with that. Now get your cat, put a little adhesive on his back, and slide him down in there. Now you've got these two little pieces, and the measurements are on the PDF. I think it was half an inch by two and a fourth. These are like the, you know, the flaps of the box. And you only would see the front flaps. Ah, uh, thanks guys. You know, I wanted to do this and I didn't know if I could come up with how it worked. I was actually pretty impressed with myself because I'm not a math person and to come up with, you know, something three dimensional and flat was, I don't know worked out pretty well. Now I'm like, what other, what other kind of boxes do we need to make? All right, many dimensional on that. Many dimensional on this one for the little flaps. <laughs> it's funny what we get excited about, isn't it? I made a box. Oh my gosh, everybody, I made a box. I know. You guys would understand totally. My husband would be like, okay. All right, now I want to make sure this dries, so I'm going to set it, I'm going to scoot it over here, and I'm actually going to take my punch and lay my punch on top of it. Let's put the rest of the card together. The base is powder pink, and this has, um, you know, normally I do my folds on my cards at the top, like this. When I cut the paper, I cut it halfway on the short side, but this card was cut halfway on the long side so that it's a wide card. And you actually can put your fold on either side. I just, and the reason why I prefer to have my folds on the top is because they photograph better. <laughs> Somebody asked me that recently and, and that's why. When I take pictures for my blog, I find that they photograph better when the fold is at the top. Okay, this is a four and a fourth by five and a fourth piece of Whisper White. I embossed it with the Pinewood Planks embossing folder. This is one of our thick ones, and it's one of my favorites. You can turn anything into wood texture. Okay, let's layer. I'm thinking, what am I missing? Oh, I have this extra piece, I guess. Hmm. Okay, who knows? We'll figure it out in a minute. Now we've got this one inch, no, no, three quarters of an inch wide strip of powder pink. I'm gonna run some adhesive down the long side and lay this ruffled powder pink ribbon. Powder pink, by the way, is retiring here in just a couple of months. The in colors that are with powder pink, like Fresh Fig, Lemon Lime Twist, all of that is gonna be gone um, and that's probably what I will encourage you to order in April because when the, um, after celebration, it seems like people are like, oh my gosh, the new catalog is coming out soon and those are gonna retire. So everybody starts clamoring to get the card stock and the ink refills, you know, if you don't have the ink refills yet for those retiring colors, that's one thing you gotta be thinking about. All right, here is a half inch strip of Flirty Flamingo. Oh, that looks a little crooked, but oh well, we're going with it because I already put the adhesive down. And this last one is a fourth of an inch. You gotta be careful because adhesive is a little bit wider than that. All right, looks like that one is a tiny bit long. All right, now let's go back and put some adhesive on it. Put it across long ways like that. And here's the word welcome. I already die cut it. I put the adhe self adhesive sheet on the back of my gray granite cardstock before I cut it, and now it's a sticker. You guys, we've done that before. It's awesome. It's the best way to adhere these when you put that adhesive sheet on the back of your cardstock. You have to remember to do it before you cut it, which is part of my problem I can't ever remember okay so happy you're here in gray granite this could be also um, whoa that's very crooked this could also be like um, <laughs> just so you guys know this is how things usually go look how crooked both of those are 
That's why we have a lot of cardstock. I put my sticker on my stamp wrong. Well, good thing we have a lot of cardstock. Anyway, this card could be, you know, like good luck. Maybe somebody's going to college or retirement or so sad you're leaving, you know, but I decided to do a welcome card because it's a moving box. All right, many dimensionals. Why do those keep disappearing? I keep using them. Oh, here's another sheet. Hmm. Probably, oh, there they are, right there. All right, baby dimensionals on this. They're actually called many dimensionals, I know, but I call them babies. Yeah, I agree, Trisha. Those what those uh, adhesive sheets make adhering these framelits a cinch because adhering these any other way is hard. It, I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy. Even with that fine tip glue pen, it's difficult. But using that adhesive sheet be um, beforehand, and if you're looking for the adhesive sheets in your catalog, they are on the adhesive uh, page with all the adhesives and on on the website under adhesive. All right, so here's our kitty. He looks like he's getting in trouble. He's got a, a little mischief on his face. I'm gonna put dimensionals on our box. Aren't you thinking like, what else can I put in a box now? I've gotta make cards with boxes. There we go. And last but not least, because I can't leave anything alone, I'm never done. I always wanna add more things. We're gonna add a few pearls just because, why not? Just a few, oh, pooey, let's see if I can get that one to stick. There we go. Oh, maybe one down here too. <laughs> and does this card not have a bow? Wow, I did two cards without a bow today, you guys. For all you who don't like to tie bows, I have two today, that's very unusual. All right, what do you guys think? Do you like it? Can you make a box? A non 3d box he's cute he's very cute all right now I told you guys I was going to show you a few things before you leave okay um, we had a swap on my team um, we called it the critter swap so everything was animals and I don't have all of them so if my team members are watching I just grabbed like a handful okay so don't get mad I'm gonna save that one for last oh in this card look at this Brittany also, who gave me the post-it note holder, she sent me this recently, and I had to share it. Look, she knows me so well. Black and white striped, hot pink, gorgeous. Those butterflies. Look at this critter. He's the pig, isn't he cute? And it's kind of a fancy fold. Nice. Now, I don't even wanna show you this one because I'm gonna case this, and it's gonna be one of our projects. No, I'm not even gonna show you what's inside. I want you guys to wait and see, but look, isn't he cute? So cute, this is coming soon. This is coming soon. This one I loved, um, this is Trisha, Trisha's on here. I loved how she did that rooster. I haven't seen him like that anywhere. Um, just kind of rustic and done with some of that white, like the chalk marker. Here's the gators, so you don't even have to stamp. You can just cut them right out of the designer series paper. There's that storybook. Um, storybook punch, is that what it's called? That's available until the end of the month. Here's this guy, he's colored beautifully. I love those colors. Those are colors that I don't normally use and I really like it. And then I got this one because I want you to see that you can use this punch without the stamps. So the cat's the same way. Oh look, that's nice. The cat is the same way. You could just punch the cat silhouette and put it on a card like that. So you don't necessarily have to always stamp it. Now this one is by um, June. She is amazingly talented and it's called a never ending card. And she used the cat, so of course I had to show you. Look how it just keeps opening and opening. Um, I have never made anything like this. It is incredible. It reminds me of that toy. I think we said it was called a Jacob's Ladder toy. It just keeps going and going. If you wanna make a card like this, uh, Google never ending card tutorial and she said that's where she found it she just found it online very cool right so anyways I had to show you that of course that one because the cat now I do have another cat card that we made this is my stamp club to go card I use the 
Well, it's, it's escaping my mind, that paper, um, the sewing stuff that I have barely used in the occasions catalog, and I'm gonna use it with you guys um, soon, and I can't think of the name, but you know, the little sewing suite of products. But anyway, there's, there's the cat, and I used the crackle background stamp with his yarn. He is watercolored with an aqua painter and pumpkin pie ink, and I did two different designer series papers. All right, you guys, you have a ton, a ton of ideas now. How to use the cat. So I encourage you to go order the cat this weekend. Bump your order to $50, you'll get a free celebration item. You will, I'm missing one, aren't I? You will um, get my, um, what am I trying to say? My all-star tutorial bundle, you'll get that for free. Needlepoint Nook, thank you, Alessandra. She's been using that. She's on my team and she's our guest stamper this month. She's been using the heck out of that amazing suite. Thank you, that's what this paper is from. Okay, so back to this. Order what you need, bump it up to $50, use the hostess code. I will send you the make and takes for free. You'll get the tutorial bundle for free and you'll get a free celebration item. I mean, guys, there's no better time to shop a Stampin' Up than right now. And we only have nine days left, so don't wait. All right, I think that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, if you have any questions about anything we did today, shoot me a message, email is best. Um, Facebook Messenger is hard for me. I don't know. I don't see the notifications, guys. So uh, email is the best way to reach me. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. All right. Bye, guys.